All right, I think we are live again. Hello, Facebook world. Um, welcome back to those of you who followed us on the um, the scrub cap pattern we just did, the basic scrub cap. Um, we are now going to do a tutorial for the flat pony scrub hat. Um, and it looks like this. Don't make fun of me. I don't have a color printer. So here is on black and white. Um, but this is our pattern. I linked it in the comment in the um, description here. I, it looks like it's, to me, it looks like it's not working. So I don't know how to fix it later. But um, I'll put it, I'll drop it in the comments here right now too. That one should work. Um, but this one, um, so our other pattern is a basic scrub cap. Um, Jane, do you have it up? Can you just show that one real quick? Basic scrub cap pattern? Or just the, yeah, the cap itself. There we go. So it's just kind of a basic um, one that um, works great. This one is designed for those with a little bit more hair or that want a just different fit. So um, Ash, Jane, um, and I worked on this. Ash really took the lead on this pattern. So I'm gonna have her walk you through it. Um, but we, should we do our introduction again? Should I, well, yeah, okay, we'll do it one more time. So do a little introduction again, since if somebody's just watching these. So Jane, uh, Jane you wanna go ahead real quick? Sure, I'm Jane, I'm coming from Arlington, Virginia. Um, I'm what I would call a recovering lawyer. Um, that's my, my uh, training, but uh, I have two college age kids now home, uh, hogging bandwidth and uh, also helping out uh, with Million Mask Challenge by driving around so that they can uh, get away from the parents and get a little time with their own music and tunes in the car. Um, so glad you're here and hope you'll try out one of these patterns. Hi, um, I'm Ash. I'm a stay-at-home parent to twin homeschoolers. So uh, in addition to whatever I'm doing, there's um, some science experiments and things blowing up or growing. Um, so that's about it. We're coming from Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. Awesome, so if you're here watching, um, Please let us know you're here. Um, drop a comment in the comment box for watching it. Um, say hello, ask some questions. Um, as far as the requests for the scrub caps, we have about requests for about 300 or so right now. Um, I think it's, I think there's a little bit more of a request for the basic pattern, but this yeah. is requested as well. Um, and that compares to, don't quote me on this, I did not actually look at the numbers recently, but I think we have somewhere around 23,000 mask requests. So the mask requests are definitely the priority. We are the million mask, mask challenge. So obviously masks are our goal, but um, caps are needed. And um, Bonnie, I'm talking. My dog is just <laughs> wanting to go outside. Um, so it's a good way to switch it up um, and yeah. So, you know, feel free to ask questions throughout. Um, we will try to add some commentary. I think Jane's gonna be sewing along with Ash. I haven't cut my fabric out, so maybe I'll catch up, maybe not. But, um, and if you have tried this pattern or if you have some tips that aren't questions, um, you know, feel free to add those in the chat as well. It's always helpful. We can always learn from each other. So um, I'm gonna pin Ash's video here, make her the spotlight. And um, Ash, you want to go ahead and take it away? Sure. So we're going to get started um, on the flat pony uh, cap. Needs about three quarters of a yard, but out of a full yard, you can get two caps because if you fold your fabric nicely, you can get two of your circles. Um, so that brings me to making sure you have printed out your pattern pieces at full scale. Um, this is an old piece. Uh, it doesn't have the uh, inch scale on it. So double check. You can make sure by making sure this is an eight inch radius on, on each pattern piece. I glue and then tape the back. Uh, this is gonna go on the fold of your fabric so that when you open it up, 
you get a circle. Yay. Your other pattern piece is a seven by 40 inch piece. So you do this by um, seven by 20 on the fold. And that gets you started. Make sure you have all your supplies. So we usually get started on the- so what, Wait, so what are our supplies? Walk me through what our supplies are. Oh. That would be helpful. Wouldn't it? <laughs> no worries. You want pins and clips because if you watched the other video, I like to, you know, anything that's like on a curve, I like to pin the bejesus out of it. Um, you need your scissors, uh, a seam ripper, ruler, and your iron because I also like to press things to death. So have your pattern pieces, and I'm following along my own tutorial. So and what type of, oh, sorry. <laughs> What's up? And what type of fabric should we be using for this? So um, you can use your quilter's cotton like you are for the masks, or you can use some of your lighter weight novelty cotton. Um, keep it with the cottons. Make sure it's pre-shrunk because these are also going to take a beating in the washing machine. Even if it is people just bringing them home to wash, they're still going in with scrubs on, on hot wash um, into the dryer very regularly. So it, it's got to be something that's going to hold up. Um, this pattern I would not attempt with a knit because it's big and needs to be stable. Um, so that said, we and then we need a ribbon too, right? We're going to use some grower and ribbon. Yeah, I'm really and not on top of this today. No, <laughs> that's why we're here. I'm here. <laughs> um, I've got an assortment of ribbons. Um, you need two pieces cut to 20 inches. And we recommend using grow grain ribbon versus like a satiny ribbon just because yeah. satiny ribbon kind of tends to slip. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried fabric ties for this as well, and I don't really like using the fabric ties because they're kind of just, they're, they, they don't pull through the fabric as nicely. Like the silky ribbon is too silky, you know, but then, but then um, you do want a little bit of a, of a slip, I think. So um, I think the grow green ribbon is, is the best way to go for that, but and the thick, and how thick are you using for Grogram ribbon? I think I have one fourth and three eighths. Um, I really like the three eighths. Um, the one quarter gets a little like, I don't know, it pulls a little bit more, I think, and you get a really good, um, like, I don't know, it just, it seems to be able to be more stable with the three eighths. Um, and, just, and it's thin enough that it doesn't catch. I would just avoid half inch or five eighths. I would not recommend those. Um, yeah, definitely not five eighths. That's too thick. You're going to run it over, even if you're careful. If you do, if that's the only rib, grow grain ribbon you have, though, um, let us know and we can give you tips on how to use it. So don't cut the ribbon in half, though. Do not. It will lose its um, whatever the word is. We're, we're not braining well today. Yeah, <laughs> we got it. We'll we'll get through this together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man. So, to start with the band, we have our uh, seven inch by forty inch piece, and we're folding it right sides together, matching up the short ends, and we're gonna sew this together. Now, I mean, if you're living on the edge, just zap it through your machine. Or, you know, as grandma always told me, pin it together. You want to put that through. Um, pretty much everything, pretty much all of our patterns, I think, have a 3 8 seam allowance. So that's that makes it easy to remember. And that's just using the edge of your presser foot for the most part. Or most machines have a 3 8 line. Let's 
see. Anybody have any questions so far on printing out the pattern? Um, we didn't include like a pattern for the band because I just thought it would be kind of a waste of paper um, since we cut a line. But you know, if that is something that people find they really need, we can um, you know release that separately. But um, um, let's see. Anybody else any questions so far? Feel free to drop them in the comment box. If you're just here watching, say hello. So we don't think we're alone talking into the void. Um, what's, so, the, what's the thickness of the band again? I'm cutting, I'm trying to cut my own fabric here, Ash. Can you remind the me? The width of this is seven inches. Seven inches, thank you. So after you've sewn the short ends together, you're gonna lay it out on your ironing surface, your pressing board, and you're going to open that seam and press it. Now this all seems very funky, but I promise there's a reason. You press that open and then pop it back. Okay. Now, I think you can see, you press it open. Now you're going to run your machine about a quarter of an inch along your seam, pressing down the seam or stitching down the seam allowance. Now, the reason we're doing this is because this allows you to have a place for your ribbon to come out. So um, that's what you're, you're, you're kind of creating here. Hi, Loan. Hi again. <laughs> if you've had a chance to try this pattern, feel free to um, you know drop any tips that you have or questions in the comment box. If you haven't tried it, feel free to ask your questions as well. <laughs> if you're watching this later, feel free to ask them as well. Um, we'll be here. It's a lovely little nest from somehow. Then this is the, I don't know if you can see the stitches, but that's the good side. Then you kind of create the, the casing by folding about three quarters of an inch into your band. And this is gonna go all the way around. How do you keep your um, fabric when you're doing this? Like, how do you keep it from sewing into, onto itself? Cause I feel like I'm having a challenge with that. Sewing onto itself? Yeah, like sewing, like, like keeping the, the other, the back layer out of the way. Cause you have, it's like a loop now, right? Yeah. Um, very carefully. So this is where, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's an answer. I mean, we just <laughs> um, push it out of the way. So before we, we go to sew on, we're gonna, we're gonna use our clips. Cause we're gonna put our, our ribbon in there. And honestly, the answer is you, you go slow and, and carefully and you uh, you guide that fabric around. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's, I think the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a trick. Wouldn't that be nice? Just... Sorry, I didn't have nice prepared um, pieces. No, I think it's good because I think it gives people a chance to do this along with us. Um, they can watch it later and um, kind of go along with us. And Yeah, I think it's great. It also gives us a sense of timing. How long will this take? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and one, one thing I actually really do like about these caps is they're sort of like a brain cleanser and a bit of a meditation. So I'm on to like my second fold. So I did my first fold around for the casing and now I'm doing my second fold. 
And when you do the second one, are you just kind of like folding it up again, the same distance or is it a different distance or? It is the same distance. I use that first fold as like my straight edge. Can you show us on the, can you hold it up to the camera so you can see? And this is my favorite part because it looks so tidy. And how wide is that again? Um, this is probably closer to an inch, but you're aiming for three quarters. Okay. If you're, if it's not perfect, that's fine. This, this pattern is extremely forgiving. So you didn't even measure it when you did it? Like you didn't, you just kind of winged it? Uh, I did because I have made a bunch of these, but I mean, you, you, sh you should give it a quick measure. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than three quarters. Oh no, oh no, just a tiny bit too big, but yeah, you should go ahead and measure it. Like your first, your first fold, you really should. But what is the quote? Protection, not perfection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally stole that from somebody on the that uh, Facebook. The, the funny video. Yeah, no, because I can get all up in the details and convince myself that nope, got to stop, can't do anymore because it's wrong. Just yeah. keep going; it will work out. Yeah, as long as it's even that's really the important part of this okay wait, wait what do you mean by even what's what needs to be even the the casing as long as it's like about the same width all the way around so if it's like a little over three quarters it should be like a little over three quarters like the entire fold so you should have like two parallel like your fold should be parallel to your fold does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I found too that a good way to look to be sure that I was doing it evenly was seeing that the bottom stayed even. Right. So I was, you know, I was just kind of eyeballing it and making sure that I was preserving a, a square, you know. Yeah. Um, and that of course assumes that I was cutting a straight line, which is a big assumption. Well. Ash, real quick. So I just got, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit behind you. Oh, my machine is doing something very strange. That's not good. Okay, we'll have to fix that. But um, real quick, when you're folding up the um, fabric, are you folding it? Like, do you, um, do you have the back side of the pad of the fabric facing you or are you folding on the front side of the pattern? I have the good side facing down. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at the inside of the band. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just figured, let me just make sure that. Mm. Hoping you can see. So you should be like seeing that um, seam allowance that you sewed down. That's kind of like your starting point. And we're back to there because we're gonna, we're gonna do something funky. So I like to put a pin in it. Yeah, this, can you like be sure to really walk yeah. through this part slowly? Cause this part is like, I think the trickiest part for, for me at least. It's magic. Kind of figuring out where, yeah, it is magic once you figure, <laughs> kind of figuring out where I'm supposed to be sewing and all that and where I'm supposed to be cutting the seam on. Okay, so we're not, we're not sewing anything yet, but we're, we're preparing and it'll make it easier when we're putting our ribbons through. So this is where you need your seam ripper. Wait, wait, okay, so wait, walk me back. What, so we folded it up and now we're, we're back to our seam, right? Yes. Okay. Did you sew anything down yet? I have not sewn anything down yet because okay. it's easier to do this before putting in your ribbons. So you can bring your ribbons through and tack them all down. Okay. I think that's how I... I think that's why I had it in the pattern. Oh, maybe I didn't. Yeah, in the pattern, I think. Okay. No, you don't actually. Yeah, yeah. This is where I need help because I will end up, I have ended up using guidance. Okay. Um, I thought you sewed the top of, so the, 
team refer to the back of the seam cap for, from the pressed edge, open about one fourth inch on either side. This is where your ribbon ties will come out. Yeah. Now we stitch, oh right, that, that happens at the end, Never mind. Sorry, you're right, sorry. I was just, <laughs> ignore me, please continue. <laughs> You're, you're literally going to rip the seam open a little bit. So about a quarter of an inch on this side and then flip it over on the good side, quarter of an inch over here. And that's with it completely folded, Ash? Yep. You fold? You want it to open. Okay. Because your ribbon's going to come out of there. Oh dang, and I used fab I used thread that matched my fabric. Yeah, I had the same question, Jane. Like, so where like the I just want to make sure that it's working. Yeah, I want to make sure that I'm okay. Yeah. Okay, it's it's right hard to like see. A, it's like a split on the edge. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I see. So okay. your original seam yep. is what you're kind of ripping apart, but you put your pin there so you, you don't rip up too much. Got it. So then when you're placing your ribbons, it's really easy to, to lay them flat. Okay, so remind me how long the ribbon pieces should be. Um, 20 inches, I believe. Double check. Yeah, 20 inches. Which I find interesting. I have this cute ribbon that has, it's like a ruler. We're measuring mm -hmm. and it's not accurate. <laughs> How frustrating. So we measure from that back seam up um, 11 inches. And you can put a pin there or what have you. But what you're going to do you see it okay? This is the trickiest part of the cap is that opening and the ribbon thing. So when, so I, un, if I'm unfolding my seam and I'm putting the ribbon in, wait, like where does, does the ribbon have to go under both of the folded in seams? Yes, it goes under both about, I don't know, quarter, quarter inch up because you're going to want, you're, we're going to sew over it. And you want to lay it down flat right in that crease. Okay. And try and push the ribbon up as far to the crease at the top as possible. Right. Assuming yeah. I want to avoid sewing that at some point. Yeah, because we're going to sew around this um, at the top edge of the, the folded channel. Got it. But we're gonna sew that ribbon in. So we wanna make sure we know exactly where it is. But what keeps it nice and flat is you can feed that ribbon through the, the hole you made. And that's gonna make the drawstring. Clever. It's nice and clipped. If you have any questions as we're doing this, um, you know, feel free to ask. If something wasn't clear, um, you know, let us know. We can. Um, I think Jane and I are also, you know, working along. I'm a couple steps behind Ash, so I could show it as well as we're going. But um, let's, you know, feel free to ask those questions. So that gets repeated on the other side. Other side of the. The seam, 11 inches. And the clips really help like keep that ribbon where it's supposed to be. So if you have clips or binder clips, 
this is like the best place to use them. I've pinned my fabric or my ribbon too, but I think that the, I'm going to try the binder clips. I think that's going to be a little easier for me. Yeah, I've, 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 I've pinned it too and it definitely works, but I found like, it, I don't know why it was just a much clearer indicator. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm constantly worried I'm going to sew my ribbon down in the casing. Yeah. So once once the ribbon is down, you're going to go to where you sew the end of the ribbon or no? Not yet. I have not yet. Um, that's what we're doing now. We want to sew. See, I have it marked. Mine's right by this this top clip. So you're going to run over uh, perpendicular to your fold to run over the ribbon several times to reinforce it because that's going to be a part that that could pull out. So you really want to go over it a few times. a quiet group this time. I feel like people were, there was like <laughs> much more active commenters in our first group. People are tired. They're like, we can only watch one tutorial at a time. Yeah. And what are you doing now? You're sewing. These. I'm, I'm tacking that ribbon down. Got it. So like, I really do like to be extra on the ribbon because like a couple times I've put this cap on, I really yank that ribbon tight. So I go over it several times. I wonder, I wonder if it's worth attaching it like at two, like doing two like next to each other. You know what I mean? Like two lines next to each other, but then you'd see those from the outside. So I don't know. Now you still see these from the outside, but so you could definitely do two parallel. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good idea. But now um yeah you can I mean you still see that tack down on that side um because I I think going through all the the layers makes it a little firmer but once you do that you're ready to go around the entire band okay so you tack it down on both sides first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when you sew the casing, you're gonna start at the back seam and you're gonna reinforce this a few times to make sure that your seam doesn't come undone from where we made our, our drawstring. Okay. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer says we're doing great. Yay. Thank you. I'm like a step behind you. I'm currently ironing my seam allowance or my uh, my casing down. Jane, how's it going over there? Um, it's going good. So on the case on the uh, casing, I'm doing it at the very bottom, right? of the what do you mean what side what what kind of uh as you're going around the brim are you doing like an eighth of an inch or just catching that bottom um yeah i'm doing about an eighth of an inch away from oh right yeah that bottom, that bottom edge okay no. what do you wait wait jane so what do you like it's not an eighth of an inch from the bottom edge it's, it's from, from the from that um the, the fold, fold we made to make the yeah, on yeah. The second fold. Perfect. Yeah, the second fold. Okay. Yeah, the bottom of the casing. Got you're it. gonna do about an eighth of an inch. Okay. Stay away from the ribbon. It's it's not an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the band. That's where I just wanted to clarify. It's an eighth of right. an inch, kind of off of the end of that casing. Ash, 
gosh, your machine is so intense. What's that? Your machine is so intense. <laughs> it's a cheapie. It's having some issues. Oh yeah, your other one died, right? Yeah. It was not. It was not meant to do all this. Um, when I'm ripping, when I'm ripping the seam allowance, do I rip through just the front of it, or do I rip like through the whole part of it? I like ripping through like the whole bottom of it. Okay. Um, and then it's just open. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay, Jennifer says when she sews circles, she's the machine that allows her to remove the storage drawer and loop the fabric around the open machine arm. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, that's what mine does here. I don't know, maybe I can adjust it so you can see it. So this, I can put the casing or the band around, assuming that I don't have binder clips on them, but it works pretty good. So. <laughs> I don't know, Siri thought maybe she should, uh, <laughs> So once that's all sewn down, you can make sure you haven't sewn through your ribbon. Like a little doll skirt. Cute. Fabric makes me think of all the doll clothes I used to make out of my grandma's stash. <laughs> the seam allowances are like, yeah, it's a little tight on there. So it keeps your casing open. Got our casing pin, you got our casing sewn down. Um, and now we're moving on to the crown. How are you guys doing over there? I hear the machine. Good, I'm measuring my um, ribbon out here. I always like forget where I put my ribbon and then I have to remind myself. Forget where I put everything. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired today. It's like killing me. I'm completely so, under caffeinated, so. I think I'm <laughs> under caffeinated too. I think it's a serious problem. Yep. Oh, look. <sighs> what, oh wait. My drawstring worked. Oh wait, here, let me show you, let me, let me check you up. Here, wait. Okay, there, show, show us again. Wait, where, Jane, where'd you go? I can't see Jane. Jane just disappeared on us, we lost her. Uh-oh. I'm here. Uh -oh. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Jane. <There> you are. <laughs> yeah, I got the internet connection is unstable. Uh-oh. I was about ready to holler upstairs and say, people, go outside, do not stream. We're doing something important. Yay, Jane! <laughs> oh man i have some serious angst over drawstrings and casings yeah me too i'm like if i like shove it as far as i can into that bottom i like the the binder clip kind of clipping tip versus the pinning it, it makes me feel like i'm actually yeah in the right spot i think and i find that the ribbon rolls if i try to pin it and i just don't have confidence um that it's actually going to stay put mm -hmm. yeah i'm sorry i'm i'm binder clip for life club here all right i'm jumping us back to you ash now okay. all right so we're on to our um crown and we're like in the home stretch so i um 
I mean, you can kind of just wing it, but I like to take those points where the fabric was creased, where your middle points are, um, and you can find the middle of your band. So obviously your back center is where your seam is, and then your front center is ha -ha, halfway. So I match up the front. Okay, wait a second, wait, pleats. Yes, so this is the easy way to do the pleats. I like having it on there. You match it up, okay. you make your pleats, and then it's easier to grab all that um, fabric. Are so you, you find doing the right center sides point. Sides together? Yep, uh, make sure your right sides are together. Otherwise you end up with a very interesting cap. I have done that. Um, and how many pleats? We're doing like four one inch pleats, right? Yep, so two on each side of the center back. Okay. So, and they're like, again, about one inch and you're probably gonna have to adjust them. So you can, you can measure or you can, you know, eyeball. And again, this is on the curve. So it's gonna be a little bit harder. I always kind of eyeball it and then um, I start sewing, when I'm sewing the, the band to the cap, I start sewing right past the pleats so that I get to the pleats last so that if I need to readjust the pleats, I can. Ah, see, I pin the whole thing. I do too, but for some reason, I still end up having issues with that when I like, I don't know. That's normal. Pleats, oh, like circles are really, they're really tough. But I mean, another thing I like to do is start from that center point and pin. That way I know how much fabric mm -hmm. I have to work with. Okay, dumb question. Am I pleat, which side of, am I trying, which way am I pleating? Am I pleating both the brim and the cap together? Like, like you are pleating this? your big um, crown circle. Yeah. Make one inch pleats and your, um, your brim stays flat. Okay. So you pleat that and then lay it nice and smooth onto your brim. Okay, got it. And your pleats can go whatever direction you want. Yeah. And I'm doing how many per side again, Ash? Two on each side of your back seam. Okay. I think I was a little economical there with my pleat. Didn't really do a nice inch there. And Jane, that's why I like to, when I start sewing around the brim or pin around the brim, even I always start you know, just past the pleats and then get to the back to the pleats last. Uh -huh. Yeah. That allows me to kind of use your air, um, not as precise as. Never <laughs> start by sewing over the pleats. <laughs> you have to adjust them. Okay. Did we add that in the pattern? I can't remember if we did. Like I pattern. don't know, but it's like. We should look, make sure we did. Um. I think that's part of our, it says on one side of the pleats moving away from the pleats. Let's see. Uh, it just says to adjust them. Yeah, always like save the pleats for last so you can adjust. I feel like I need like a nap today. And I was like, oh, the sunshine is going to be like a much, I'm going to have like much more energy today. And I like legitimately think I need a nap right now. I, on. I, I think I'm just boring on the tutorial. You are not <laughs> boring. Stop it. I will not let you speak, like speak of yourself that way. <laughs> no. Really helpful, Ash. I can't tell you the number of times that I have thrown something across the room for lack of my ability to understand. I'm a visual learner, so this is really helpful. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm like doing it a step behind you to kind of stay followed. Um, 
I just had, I just had a tough week. I think my, my toddler is just being really, really, really difficult. And I feel like no matter how much attention or, or love or whatever I give him, he's just, he's still really difficult. And it's like really discouraging, you know, mm-hmm. just like, what can I do? It's, it's such want- a toddler thing though. It's not you. It's like toddlers just have really, really, really big feelings all the yeah, time. We all have big feelings, you know? Yeah. We all have big feelings right now, but toddlers, it's just, and they don't, they really lack a lot of the expressive language skills to let you know like why and how and able to understand what's going on and it's like I would never want to be a toddler again <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, it's amazing when you think about how much they have to learn in such a short period of time yeah that's and, true. and then having that awareness that they're not able to make us understand what they're thinking or feeling or wanting that frustration level has just got to be enormous yeah it's totally frustrating as a parent too don't get me wrong but i thought about that a lot because i had you know the twins so ash you have two you have jennifer and laurel telling you that you are not boring um (laughs) and they said they will just and laurel said um she just won't have questions until she makes one and then she's going to be bothering you so get ready (laughs) yeah we i can can facetime with laurel we released the patterns um a little bit early because and because we wanted to get some like people asking questions to know where we should kind of focus our tutorial um i don't think as many people uh, you know saw it so we just kind of decided to go ahead and do our tutorials. So we might end up having to redo them based on um, people's specific questions. I think for nurses week, um, next week, we're going to do walk, walk you through one part of the cat pattern each day. So we can do a sew along kind of a thing. So, um, but you know, just have to kind of constantly be evolving. So. So I don't know if anyone really noticed, but as I came around this side again, um, with my clips, I had to completely readjust my, my pleats. Like I had to take both out on this side. The other side was uh, a lot closer, but this side, not so much. So always like save your pleats for last. So when you go, like Vanessa was saying, like when you start sewing, start sewing after your pleats. And that way, you know, if the fabric moves or what have you, you can adjust again before you sew them down. So this is this is the mess we're working with right now. I see lots of clips holding all those pleats down. Lost my crap. Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> I did the wrong way. I, I did what you're not supposed to do, which was I, I was like, oh yeah, that's the top. And I started going around and then I realized, hold on. I went from the bottom where the pleats were back up to the top. Fine. As long as you get to the pleats last. I start on the other yeah. side of the pleats. Yeah, that's what I was thinking I was doing, but I ended up in the wrong place. So I fabric at the top, not where I needed them to be for the pleats. So yeah. It's okay, Ash, stop. Walk us through what you're doing here. So I'm just, oops, uh, my phone is actually plugged in, so I can't really go too far. So I'm just sewing around where we clipped. And you started sewing on the other side of the pleats, right? Right. So uh, I started sewing right about here, leaving a little bit of space um, between the last pleat and where I started, just in case. And I'm just going around the the cap and I did double check to make sure my right sides were together because I had a moment of panic. I sewed wrong sides of the one I sewed them the wrong side. I like not wrong sides together. I sewed them one like facing different directions so it looks absurd. And I left it because I'm it's my my sample. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's still functional. <laughs> The other thing I like about clips, I won't run them over. Yeah. Oops, I do have a pin in there
Um, another thing to remember is to make sure that your band is laying flat as you're feeding it through the machine because you're, you're sewing um, your flat band to your circle. So it's gonna try to bunch up, make sure that you're keeping it flat and not um, creating any pleats onto your band because that, that can happen. Mm -hmm. So just feed it through nice and, nice and flat. You guys are going to hate me, but I think we're going to have to do a shorter video for each that's like a, so this will be like our sew along ones, but I think yeah. we're going to be a shorter one for people if they just want to like hop on and watch the video and some tips, quick tips, and then they realize not everyone's going to have their stuff up like this, so. Yeah, I think we're going to need a, like just short, like an edited Everything right Sorry. Live and learn. We're volunteers. That's, yeah, like, I feel like this week I've had to remind people a couple times that, like, we're volunteers doing this in our non existent free time. <laughs> right. So, this is supposed to be our meditative stress release. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, you're so funny. Maybe what we should do, you guys, is um, like do another, like I'd be willing to like pop on maybe, um, you know, another time and, and set it up a little bit more in advance and let people know they can join us with, you know, their cap pattern and we can talk through it together. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, I'm going to my, attaching my cap crown to my thing. So I've attached the crown to the band and it it just looks humongous. I, I love it because it's like it looks absurdly huge. So um, did you did you stitch around twice? Because I've been top stitching around twice when I do this. Um I haven't stitched around twice because I use my serger or I use let me see if I can get yeah. There's a, I don't know if you can see it. I'm, I'm really terrible with the camera here. So <laughs> the number 18 stitch on here, yeah. um, okay. it stitches down again and does the zigzag. But if you're just doing a regular zigzag, um, stitch around again, okay. stitch around twice. Um, for those of you, you know, watching, would that be helpful if we did kind of another sew along? I think we'll do the shorter one so people can watch it quickly. Um, but, um, you know, let us know if you think kind of a sip and sew thing for, um, and by sip, I mean tea or whatever, you know, um, do that. We could do it via Zoom or we could do it on here. Um, I'm currently trying to attach my pleat or my crown to my band and I Okay, so if I don't have that fancy stitch that Ash has, I'm gonna top stitch or not top stitch, but I'm gonna stitch around um, the cap twice when I'm attaching the band. Zigzag stitch Vanessa on the edge or just two I would zigzag the edge as well to prevent fraying. Um, or you can do that, you know, overlock stitch or whatever. Um, yeah, okay. If you have a serger, you can serge it. I have one, I've, I've never used a serger, but I have one in my closet that I'm, my mom gave to me that I'm afraid to use. Ooh. I'm actually gonna run this through my serger, I think. After the video. At this point, it's basically done. After you like surge it or finish it however you want to finish it, it's done. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any um, hair. Just, just you guys. <laughs> but it just goes on. We can go grab that blue wig. 
but right now it's on the dinosaur. Don't take it off the dinosaur. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, you get that the center back seam needs to go obviously in your neck. And then like it's got tons of room for your hair. And this I like this because like you could totally make this for anybody who has long hair. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, a dude with long hair and just leave it as a poof or a, I lost my ties. Or you just pull it snug and you tie it in the bun or the ponytail. Yeah. I'm totally going to get Marin to try this. She has waist length, very thick hair. I feel like my hair is really long right now compared to the way I wear it, but it this cap will it won't do this justice. I have decently longer hair and I really like the um I really like this one. I like this one better because I feel like it's actually and if what if what we're trying to do is, is get healthcare providers something that you know covers their hair completely, the basic cap is great, but if you really have long hair that is particularly like wavy and kind of frizzy and curly like mine. Um, right. it's like, it's gotta be, I just need it covered, all covered. I can't even like, you know, go without it. So, um, I feel like this one too is great because then you don't have to do anything special. If you were yeah. doing, you know, French braids or something to try to, you know, pull your hair down really close to your head, the basic cap could work, but this one, you know, is really great if you just want to throw your hair in a messy bun and go. Right. I say, like, I know what I'm talking about having had <laughs> Short hair for 25 years. So. I, I had long hair until like two months ago. So I, and I put this on my daughter, but two days ago to just demonstrate the range of sizes it could fit. And I literally had just put her hair up in, in a, um, a scrunchie yeah. and threw it over. And it, it was a really fast way to cover. I can show you guys. I have a little bit more hair here. So, um, my ponytail, excuse my hair's too, I should like, I really should have like attempted to like clean myself up, but sorry. Um, okay. So here's mine that I made earlier. I've got my ribbon. So, um, my hair's kind of whatever, really. And I just kind of tuck it in. I do like to like tug it up a little bit and then kind of retuck my hair in, but you can see it's just, it's all in there. And this is why I don't like fabric ties and I like the grow grain ribbon because this cinching part is really hard. Um, so yeah. Oh, Jennifer says she she would totally use this for floor nursing from when she worked in the med surg nursing. So do we cover, do they cover their ears? I'm just gonna cover my ears. Yeah. Oh, there's Marin, Marin, be a model for us. Be a model. Oh, hi, hi. Hello. Sorry, Marin. <laughs> you're, you're on Facebook Live, I should warn you, Marin. put this on, you gotta show me. Okay, so I'm just tying it here. I just pull the ribbon around and tie it like that. Okay. But it, it contains it all. So. Do you want me to? Do you have a oh, yeah, Marin's got a ton of hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if anybody has any questions, um, you know, feel free to let us know. Um, we'll do a shorter one that you can watch quickly, but this one was kind of more of a sew along. We'll do step by step together um, to talk it out. Um, I think we'll probably wait to do the quicker one until a couple people get us some more feedback on what, what where they're running into issues. So that way we can highlight that. Um, yeah, so you just tuck all that hair in there. I love it. This is, I like this one a lot. I think it's really, and again, so this is kind of our like bouffant one that we, we again, we chose this one over the bouffant one because the bouffants require elastic and we just, we didn't want to put a pattern out there that people felt like they had to use their elastic. So, oh man, beautiful. <laughs> Word. There you go. That's it. Um, awesome. Thank you, Ash and Jane, for um, you know jumping on here and and helping me. Oh, I just oh, wow. sewed this wrong. Wow, I didn't even catch the bottom layer. Brilliant, Vanessa. Um, but thank you for jumping on here with me and. Um, People have questions, let us know. Again, we do have requests for caps. So um, not as many, obviously we have way more requests for masks. So keep making the masks, but try some caps out. Let us know what you think. And um, yeah, we're here.
So thanks guys. Thanks. Thank you.